Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's planning committee, Tuesday, the 7th of November, uh, 2023. And um, we'll get straight onto uh, the agenda. Item number one, apologies for absence. Um, I've currently got Councillor Kingston, Councillor Claymore and Councillor Jones. I believe everyone else is here. Oh, and Councillor Maycock, sorry, yes, he's uh, got a problem with his vehicle. Okay, um, item two is the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, those present, are we happy that those were a true rec uh, record of events? Um, Gareth to sign off. Can we have a seconder, Peter? Thank you. Any declarations of interest? Item three. Sorry, yes, we need to vote on the minutes. All those in favour? Okay, that's carried. Um, any declarations of interest? No, no declarations of interest. Um, tonight I'd like to introduce um, Harjit Gill, who's the legal advisor for us, to my left. And we've got um, our highways officers from County Highways as well. Tracy Poynton um, as the um, demo services. And we're going to hand straight over to Glenn Baker Adams, who will take us through tonight's uh, application. Thank you, Chair. So, yep, this application is for the erection or installation of a new 3G synthetic pitch with sports lighting, perimeter fencing, a storage container, and an access path uh, contained all within the Anchor Valley Sports Complex off Moore Lane in Amington. Just one small update to report um, after the report's publication. The ecology matters, just wanted to specify the area in concern uh, that will be left alone in terms of ecology management or well, lack of it, this area here in the corner, um, this will be untouched by any sort of activity just to let wildlife do its thing on its own and without interference. I just thought I'd point that out, that's specifically where we're talking about if any mentions of ecology are mentioned in the report. So hopefully we're familiar with the area of the site. The Sports Anchor Valley uh, playing pitch has been in, around for some time. There are currently a number of pitches already laid out on the grass itself. As part of the proposal, um, two pitches located where the proposal is will have to be relocated to the western side of the existing facility. We've got an existing changing block, car park, all serving the um, playing pitches currently. Just to get a bit more clear of you in terms of what's going on on the site, what we're dealing with, um, you've got the Amington uh, Caravan Park to the to the east, and that's pretty much the residential properties that are in close proximity to the site. Obviously, around the site as well, we've got quite a lot of uh, trees, um, so this is quite you know naturally sensitive area. And um, as I'll explain later on, um, this will obviously be protected in terms of relevant conditions. So in terms of the actual scheme itself, all very familiar and very similar to many 3G pitches across the country. The pitch laid out in accordance with specifications and guidance. Storage container, pretty standard affair again. Um, standard unit to contain relevant things like goals, bibs, cones, the like. Perimeter fencing, again, all very familiar, all very standard and green is obviously to blend in nicely with the local landscape. The floodlights, um, these obviously will be downward facing to light up the pitch during the winter months. Obviously now will be prime time for that for that um, to be on. Standard heights, uh, I think they're 11, 11 metres high. It yeah, shows a bit of an indication of the, the level of spill onto the playing pitch. There will be some element of spill outside of the site, but as you can see, it's very much contained to the perimeter. But obviously the main idea is to, to highlight the actual pitch itself. In terms of relevant policies, in our local plan, it's SU6 and SU7 that's the most relevant to playing pitch provision, identifying that we do need a new 3G pitch, and obviously this will conform squarely with that. Again, yeah, just more supportive information about that on, on there. And nationally, we've got policies 98 and 99, 98 and 99 in the MPPF, highlighting again the support for various facilities that encourage sport recreation, which this will conform to. As part of the application exercise, we've consulted with relevant uh, consultees, all come back supportive. Uh, these include the environmental health, uh, highways, ecology team that's uh, within the council, and uh, highways, sorry, from Staffordshire, 
just on the environmental health issues specifically, a lot of work has gone into making sure that the mitigation plans submitted will make sure that anyone living nearby is not affected by the development in terms of noise, because obviously these are football pitches, but people are playing, you know, but, um, you know, later into the day, so we don't want to make sure that um, they are managed accordingly. And we've made a lot of work in making sure the mitigation plan on the application is uh, robust, and that is now to a position where we can, you know, safely say that um, that is in a position where we can uh, be supportive of. And there's lots of conditions in that that um, if there were to be in breach, that we could enforce against that where necessary. So yeah, um, with all that, uh, yeah, we got an application here that's supported in policy. Relevant consultees will come back supportive. Conditions will require the fencing to be of a specification that won't impact the residents, pro residential properties, mitigation plan, opening hours as well, making sure they don't stray into the, the small hours, making sure that's again looking after the people living nearby. So we have a suitable proposal, well located, meeting all relevant policies, and therefore recommendation is approval, subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Um, we'll go on to any questions for Glenn on his report. The only one I have, it, and it came up at the um, Bow Hall residence meeting, is what is the lifespan of a 3G pitch? I haven't got a clue. I couldn't answer it. I have to, I'm not interested in graphs. <laughs> Good. Um, it's definitely better than its uh, 2G or 1G equivalents. Um, I have a, a football WhatsApp group, and they're always moaning to me that the lower equivalents, they don't last very long, so they keep have to replacing all the turf that's gone on there. In terms of actual year numbers, I'm not sure, but... Um, I'm pretty confident it's a very long lifespan. And so they'll be keeping upgrading to keep up with um, yeah, the use of the pitch. Do we have any further questions, not statements, just questions, Danny? It's about 15 to 25 years, assuming that you look after it and sweep it. Thanks for that clarification. I knew that there'd be a, a football freak in the room somewhere. Um, Andy, did you have a question? No, I was going to answer the same question. Any further questions, Peter? Mike? Okay. Um, Glenn mentioned that the height of the uh, lighting gantries are 11 metres. Uh, I think I read in one of the papers uh, this afternoon, 14 metres. I wonder if you could clarify that, please. Sorry, I've just noticed on the top of that specification there, it's 15 metres high. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. Um, my only concern, but I've, I've, it's been suggested that um, the um, spillage of light outside of the field with the modern lights is a lot better than, for example, in rural at school where you can actually see the elements of the bulbs pointing straight at you. Um, if, if, if that sort of closes it down, I'm thinking of the residents at the, um, the, the um, retirement homes. Yes, no, I agree. And uh, obviously the idea with this picture kind of shows that the spill very much is contained within. As I said, there will be like the elements of the perimeter, but you know, very closely you know, related to this, the pitch itself. <coughs> Thank you, Glenn. The other point that I was going to ask was small lane. Um, anybody that's walked down there and nearly got run over um, would realise how narrow that road is. Um, and at points, you can't actually get two cars side by side passing without one pulling over and the, letting the other one pass. Um, if there's a, a good uh, 3G pitch in the, in the um, sports field, then I suggest, well, I would imagine that you're probably going to get more traffic because of the um, continued um, availability of the f pitches during the, the wetter weather, whatever. Um, I see that uh, highways haven't actually <coughs> flagged up anything on that, um, but it's just a personal thought. I know the, the ramp going down is a monster, um, as my car will tell you. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it's just really for the people that live down there and any visitors that may be walking down there. Off. I went down there one Sunday when the matches had finished and there were masses of people coming um, out along that road to get back into Amington. Um, 
So yeah, that, that was my only other concern. I think based on previous models around the country, um, people either use one pitch or the other. So you won't get everybody using all the pitches at the same time. Um, if I can just bring Richard in from highways, because obviously, um, Mark even, sorry. Just answer to Richard, it's much better. Um, and he can probably answer those questions, because obviously they've done the study. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for the question, Councillor Thurgood. Um, in terms of how we've looked at it, um, it might not be a simple answer to the question, but obviously the facility is an existing facility, has been there for some time. In terms of planning land use, which Glenn can always pick up on, and in terms of transport use, in terms of the amount of traffic a development, whatever the development is, would generate, is how we determine whether it's good, bad or indifferent. You have an existing facility that is not going to increase in size. You're changing a grass pitch to an all-weather pitch. So, for example, maybe at this moment in time, the grass pitch could be waterlogged due to all the rain we've recently had. Therefore, anybody in this room who wanted to go couldn't use that because of the state of the ground conditions. By changing it to a 3G, you're just changing the surface, you're not making the sports complex any bigger. You haven't doubled its size, you haven't caught, you know, you're not increasing the volume of traffic that the site would generate. So when we've looked at the application, for us, it's a like for like change. What is there now has gone in the past and that's how it's got its previous planning permissions. And we accept more lane is not um, ideal, let's put it that way. But in planning terms, from our point of view, because a, the proposal doesn't increase the usage of the site, there wouldn't, in theory, be any more traffic that it could generate because it's already there. So, and, and just to add another point, I fully understand and accept more lane. We did look at it. Um, the historic problem and the problem we still have with more lane is, as you know, it is lit, but there is not a consistent footway provision down there. Um, we haven't got enough highway land to provide a footway, which is maybe why none was ever provided all those years ago when it was built as is. And the other elephant in the room as well, just to point out, and I'm happy to discuss through questions later on, is the railway bridge that you cross at Moor Lane isn't the county councils, it's network rails. So we don't have any ability to do anything with that bridge because it's not our asset, it's network rails. So again, to provide even a footway provision over the bridge is not within our gift. The bridge is an asset of network rail. So to summarise, we didn't object because we did not see any uplift in the provision of pitches. Therefore, all of the planning that has gone in the past still stands. There is no further detrimental impact to what is there now. Mark, I wonder, what would you suggest actually in terms of, I accept what you say about the bridge network rail, and that doesn't really concern me too much. It's the, the bending nature and the trees overgrowing um, on, on actual Moor Lane. I'm, would it be that, although it's not dealing with this planning application at all, but for advice, um, would it be possible to, to lay a footpath across the adjoining land so that people could get more directly, once they're over the bridge, to that, uh, to that um, facility? We haven't got enough land as a highway authority to provide anything within the corridor that you drive down or walk down or cycle down at the moment. Obviously, that is private land. 
So therefore, there would have to be negotiations with that landowner to put that facility in. There obviously would be a, a cost to put that facility in. And generally, not always, but generally, um, when a footway is remote from the public highway, from public highway land, it remains <coughs> private. So somebody would have the maintenance responsibility for it because it's not associated with the highway. Therefore, the maintenance remains with somebody else. Thanks, Mark. Is there anything else you wanted to say on that, um, Glenn? No. Um, Craig, you've got a question? Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know is it out there can use the pits up to 10 o'clock on Monday to Friday, but it also say you can't use the pits with or audio device for 9 o'clock till 9 o'clock at night. I'm wondering why there's a difference between the two. That's with the gift of my environmental health colleagues. They've done their homework and research, and I believe that's to be the acceptable noise level at that time. So I'm like FDM, my experts have said that. Did you want to come back, Craig? It's more about, like, they can still use a field to 10, but they have to stop all water advice for 9 o'clock. So I don't understand why we are allowing them to 10, why we're not sinking down to 9. Again, I guess that the noise of a whistle <laughs> is more intrusive than the, I don't know, the for all the last pit game of the of the evening. Again, you know, I've just been led by my mental health colleagues on that, and that's something that you know I might bring there to attention in the report if we can make that clear as to why that difference has been made. But you know, as I say, the environmental health colleagues have come up with that uh, as the as the rationale between yeah you know, why that why that's the case. Danny. Yeah, thank you. Just following up from Craig's question, I don't know what's interfering with that. So I just think, uh, absolutely fundamentally understand the point he's making, but I think that's more of an operational issue once it's functioning. And actually the management of the centre then can take decisions as they need to if the noise is out of hand for the neighbours. And if they need to make an operational decision to reduce it to nine o'clock, I think that's more of an, a day-to-day -day operational decision. I just wondered if the officer would concur, because I know I have to make it a question. <laughs> Glenn, did you want to... Uh Come back on Danny's. No, that sounds about plausible. Um, again, the um, management plan again highlights a lot of operational issues, and they have to make sure that they can solve that in that within that time scale. Any further questions, Gareth? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, has there been any correspondence from any residents at all on this? Thank you. There's been a few. There's a, a one local resident called up the council a while ago with a bit of concern about, yeah, I think it was trying to transport issues about people obviously, you know, accessing the site, especially you know, later in the evenings. Um, so I've had to convey to them, obviously, we've had highway comments and they've been deemed to be acceptable, um, but nothing more than that really at this stage. Andy? Sorry, I'd just like to clear that up. So there, there was um, quite a heavy consultation with the residents up there. Um, the residents were happy because um, what the councillor said is that um, the pitches have been sited where they've been sited so that noise and light and everything else isn't going to be disturbing. Um, as we've heard from highways, there's not going to be an increase in traffic. But also as well, um, it's been a bit more of a two-way street with the concerns of the residents. So what, we, what we've said to them is that uh, we can keep the car park open to some of the residents so that um, if there's any parking issues, uh, for, for people who live up there, they they will they can use our car park to park down there. So the ha there's a bit of give and take there with it. Okay, just to be a little bit clear of that. Thank you. Thanks for that, Andy. Any further questions? Okay, for me, this is a, a win-win situation. And we've all seen, you know, not to be sexist, but the explosion of girls' football down at Tamworth Football Ground, for example. Um, and I think for us... You know, as an authority, having grass pitches is a thing of the past and we need to have more of these 3G pitches or weather pitches that can be used all year round. I suppose it takes away the bit of sliding in the mud and coming back absolutely filthy away from it. But, you know, some parents might be happy about that. So for me, it's a it's a win win situation. And if there are no further questions, we'll um, we've got um, a recommendation to approve this application. So we'll go straight to the vote. Um, all those in favour? Um, that's a unanimous decision. Um, thank you very much for your attendance this evening. 
and your input um, and I wish you both all a safe journey home.